everyone, and this is my review for WWE NXT on April 19th, 2017. And uh, actually, they had a pretty interesting show with a pretty interesting lead up into next week's show as well to go along, uh, to go along with everything. Uh, but they started off the show this week with uh, Bobby Roode coming out. He cuts a promo on his takeover match and how he's taken over NXT and everything in that in that sense and how he's shaping it in his in his name and he starts like saying how happy he was until he saw last week how everybody was paying respects to Shinsuke Nakamura and putting in, like putting down his promo about the fans and everything to go along with it uh, to go along with that as well uh, really good heel stuff from uh, from uh, Bobby Roode here in, in this uh, in this aspect of everything. He gets interrupted though by Hideo Itami, and Hideo Itami comes out. He says no words, no words at all to uh, Bo to Bobby Roode in any way, and he just goes in there. He slap he slaps Bobby Roode. Uh, Bobby Roode kind of laughs it off. Looks like he's about to leave the ring. Uh, and then tries to fight uh, Hideo Tommy, but then gets hit with a GTS uh, to finish uh, to finish off the segment. I thought it was a really good segment uh, for for everything, and it looks like we're going to get Hideo Tommy versus Bobby Roode next, which is going to be honestly a pretty good. Um, uh, I think it's going to be a pretty good match uh, with both of them. I'm not sure if they're going to put the title on Hideo Itami uh, at this point in time, but we'll see what they decide to do with everything, and I'll be interested to see how this program ends out working out in the end. Uh, uh, like, even the, like Bobby Roode really sold the effect as well, the GTS, because he like they had done another thing and then they come back to the ring and Bobby Roode's still laying down in the ring uh like he had he was still out from the GTS and he gets up and like all the referees are trying to know it's like no I'm good I'm good we're good <laughs> and he stumbles around a little bit uh they go along with it. like he, he did a really good job of selling the GTS in, the, in this aspect of everything up next you had a uh, you had a promo backstage from both Tyler Bate and Jack Gallagher. Uh, both of them were uh, uh, basically cutting a promo because they're going to have a match next week for on, on NXT for the WWE UK, uh, United Kingdom Championship. Uh, and these two, uh, like they were giving their pleasantries and everything. Like both of them come off as gentlemen and everything in that sense. But you have Jack Gallagher saying, it's going to be my pleasure to beat you for the WWE United Kingdom Championship. Uh, but, uh, of course, Tyler Bay is like, well, it's going to be my pleasure to face you and defend my United Kingdom Championship and everything. And that's so to build a little bit of tension between the two of them. But they keep it gentlemanly throughout the entire time. Because, they, uh, because at the end, it's like, okay, see you next week. Uh, a type a, uh, type aspect. I, I like this. No, I, I like the aspect of it. Uh, it's just a different feel. Yes, they play it off as um, they play it off as being somewhat respectful, or they keep it gentlemanly, uh, as you would like to say. It's like they are looking forward to the challenge next week, but they don't necessarily have a heel or a face. But they each one of them says, "I'm gonna win." Type uh, type feel to it. Uh, up next, you had. Um, you had another. They're doing a lot of these performance center things now with uh, with uh, a lot of people. Like we've been seeing with Billy Kay and Peyton Royce recently, uh, but you've also been. Uh, but you've all, but they've been doing it with a few other people as well. And this time around, they do it. Uh, you have heavy machinery. They're in there attempting to try to show off and like how much they can bench press and everything in that sense. But you see, it's like and they even do a quick shot over the Drew McIntyre who is sitting over there beginning to uh, um, uh, to do his workout set. And he is like, even with uh, like we're going to show ourselves off even to the new guy as well and everything to go along with it. Uh, but eventually, you hear a little bit of commotion and you see Andrade Cien Almas. Uh, get in the face of Drew McIntyre and essentially set up a match for next week between the two of them. It's, it's like uh, CN Almas kind of challenges under, um, Drew McIntyre and they do announce later in the night that there was going to be a match for next week. So like I said, two 
I would say pretty good matches set up for next week in every way, shape, or form uh, with Tyler Bate and Jack Gallagher and Drew McIntyre and Andre Anderson and Almas, which does lead to Andrade C and Almas having a matchup next uh, against Danny uh, Birch, which this was a nothing match in, in the sense of everything. They're kind of building up the story of Andrade C and Almas right now. And the story that they're kind of going with, like, he had had his match with Aleister Black uh, at TakeOver, but then they kind of start showing pictures of him. It's like kind of foregoing his training and everything. That's just like he doesn't care much about his training. and he does, He's not focused on that. He's more focused on the social life uh, side of everything. So they're trying to play this whole aspect. It's like, yeah, he's good in the ring. But he doesn't respect his training. He doesn't respect this or that. that. And yeah, he squashes these guys. But when he goes up against the bigger talent, he ends out losing. Uh, or something in that sense. I, I don't exactly know where they're going to go with everything here. I like even how the announcers go off and say, it's like, see, this is what happens when he is focused uh, inside the ring. Uh, things like his match with Danny Burch happens. Uh not a bad way of going. We'll see where they uh, see where they how far they go with this, and uh, where everything ends up playing off with this whole Andrade C and Almas uh, thing to go along with it. Up next, they had a promo package about uh, about Oscar and like they have all the women's division like Ember Moon, Liv Morgan, Peyton Royce, Billy Kay. Well, not all of them, obviously, but a, a, a good chunk of them talking about like their experience fighting Oscar and everything in that sense. And they each still claim, even though that like she's like one of the hardest hitting. Uh, female superstars around like this they recognize she's beginning to get overconfident and like each one of them is convinced that they're going to be the first one to finally beat Asuka to go along with it uh not a bad promo package um I would say a lot a lot better than last week's one with Ember Moon uh to to go along with everything but uh, it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do with this down the road here with um like who's gonna face Asuka next, and uh, what kind of match is gonna happen? Because we're ha we're having another takeover on May 21st now. They're not waiting till SummerSlam to do another takeover. They're gonna have one in Chicago right before Backlash, uh, which is an I won't say an interesting choice in, in the terms of cities. It's just interesting that they would do one before SummerSlam because I don't remember if they did another one before SummerSlam last year. But uh, uh, I'd have to look back. I'd have to look back on that one uh, with that. But yeah, we've got another takeover coming up, so they're gonna, they're obviously setting up uh, Bobby Roode and Hideo Tommy for that, and they're also setting up a uh, what you would have to assume another challenger towards Asuka in the women's title as well. And you, you got to assume they'll do something with the authors of Pain to go along with it. Up next, you have Liv Morgan and Aaliyah going up against Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. This was an all right match. Um, th this match was all right. It wasn't anything special. It wasn't all that good either. Uh, with uh, with all four of them in there, uh, it was an aspect of what they did after the match and everything in that sense. Because uh, event uh, like Liv Morgan kind of play, they kind of play Liv Morgan off in the terms of this team with Aaliyah and Liv Morgan. That Liv Morgan's the more talented one. Like she gains control, and as soon as Liv, uh, Aaliyah gets in. She kind of lost the control, and like Billy Kay and Peyton Royce took control uh, of the match. Uh, the the offense was fine, everything in that sense. It does go with a, eventually like a um, Liv Morgan is attacking, I believe Billy Kay outside the ring, and Peyton Royce goes for a spot in the corner. She misses and gets rolled up by Aaliyah to finish off the ma uh, finish off the match. And I, I like the surprised look in Peyton Royce's face, like she just beat me type look to go along with it. And then afterwards they kind of threw a fit to go along with it. So they're playing like, uh, I'm trying to think of what they're, what they're trying to go with here with Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. Like they throw a fit after losing the match. And it, it's hard to come up with an analogy for what they're, go what they're trying to make them come off as. Um, I guess just people that like, uh, I guess, well, I, I guess sore losers in, the, in that sense to go along with it. That's what they're really, 
going for uh, in this case. I, I like on commentaries, like even like Nigel McGinnis, who's like big behind Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. Like I can't even really. It's like these two need to kind of calm it down a little bit. They just lost one match to go along with it. Like he even kind of like, yeah, this, yeah, they shouldn't be doing this type of feel to go along with it. Uh, but like I said, an all right match. Nothing really special to it. Nothing really all that good either. Um, but up next was the steel cage match. And this was a good steel cage match with Ty Dillinger and Eric Young. Like, both of them did a spot off the top of the cage, first of all. Uh, you had Eric Young uh, come off the top of the cage with an elbow. And then later on in the match, you had uh, Ty Dillinger t do a crossbody. But just, like, the two of, both of them working the cage match was done really well. I like the aspect of, like, when Eric Young finally got in the ring, it ma they made it look like Ty Dillinger was immediately trying to get out, but no, he goes in to slam the door uh, shut to shut them in and, and everything. And um, at the beginning, Eric Young had sent Sanity off to the back as well. Uh, this does eventually all break down. Uh, Eric Young does bleed a little bit in this match. Uh, he does get busted open the hard way with the cage uh, as well. And uh, it like, everything kind of worked really well with this cage match. The crowd was into it throughout most of it. Uh, the end comes with Sanity coming back out when, and I love the way that they did this. It wasn't one of those moments was like, oh, Ty Dillinger's about to get out, and the, one of them just comes in and slams the door on, it, on his head or anything like that. Like, we've seen plenty of times. No, they run out as Ty Dillinger's going to the door, and they're just like, they just, both, like, uh, Alexander Wolf and Killian Dane just both smile at him. Just shut the door and lock it back uh, to go along with it. Like, giving that menacing look is like, no, you're stuck in there with him at, at this point in time. This does eventually bring out Roderick Strong, Cassius Ono, and Ruby Wright as well to kind of um, even things up. But uh, throughout that entire time, you also have, like, Killian Dane and um, Alexander Wolf trying to climb the cage, which is where you get the cross body spot. You already have Eric Young inside of the uh, inside of the cage with Killian Dane and Ty Dillinger does the cross body off the top off the top of it as Alexander Wolves trying to get in himself. And that was the that was the aspect behind everything. I love what they did at the end of it as well. It's like uh, Ty Dillinger is like I really want to go for the pin but he sees Alexander Wolf coming back in so it's like you know what I just want to win this match. As he does that, he goes out the door, which was sitting open because Killian Dana left it open. And uh, I also like the aspect of the referee as well, uh, cutting dodge. Like, like Ty Dillinger wins the match, the referee ditches out of there, and then Ty Dillinger shuts the door and locks it behind them, leaving all of them in the cage to kind of stew over everything. To go along with it, as uh, as Cassius Ono and Roderick Strong hold up Ty Dillinger, and the crowd gives their respect and thank yous to him for this being his last NXT as well. Um, good match. I like this cage match. I thought it was a, I thought it was a really good cage match between the two of them, and it came off really well in the end. So uh, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it uh, to go along with everything. I, I have nothing really bad to say about that. Some of the other stuff that you saw in here wasn't bad uh I, I guess the only real true down point of the show if you have to say a down point because the match itself wasn't that bad was that uh tag match with Aaliyah and Liv Morgan and Billy Kane and Peyton Royce but like I said it wasn't that bad either overall this was a rather enjoyable hour of NXT uh and we'll see where they go with everything and like I said they have another takeover here in well a month now in Chicago, so they're gonna they're gonna be building up for that, and we'll see where they decide to go with everything. So that is my review this week for WWE NXT as I stumble over my words, and I thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day.